around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Seven is a significant number for a variety of reasons. One highly entertaining reason we'd like to remind you of is the magic number of top daytime dramatic serials only the CBS radio network sends your way each Monday through Friday. No less than seven of America's longtime favorite dramas. Comedy abounds with The Couple Next Door and drama with the light touch on the second Mrs. Burton. Other top CBS radio dramas enjoyed by millions include The Romance of Helen Trent, Whispering Streets, and The Right to Happiness. Hours of absorbing entertainment every weekday come from these top dramas, presented exclusively by CBS Radio, and brought to you as an important part of the different sound of this station. Come on, Rad. I got the horses out here. Let's get moving. I'll be along, Bones. No, even that right gut they call whiskey is gonna... What you doing? Changing my shirt. Changing your shirt? (sighs) You ever think you're doing that, Bone? (laughs) Not for going into Dodge City, I can tell you. Be a waste of time. Yeah, gals might think different. Hey, not them gals, right? All they're interested in is your money. They don't care if you smell pretty or not. <laughs> you sure don't have to worry about that, Bone. <laughs> Besides, if they want a slicked up dude, they can make eyes at that Easterner blew in a few days ago. What's his name? Scott. Yeah, yeah, Scott. I'm kind of interested in your little gal out at the Long Branch, ain't he? He better not be. Well, I seen him with her last night when I was in town. He'd be a tough man to beat, right? I bet he changes his shirt every other day or so. I'll change it for him if he ain't careful. And I hear his dad is rich. Now, there's a tough hand to beat. Money, good looks. He's going to lose them both if he don't stay away from Miss Laurie. (laughs) Miss Laurie? Yeah. Ain't we getting polite now? Shut up, Bone. Now, you sure you got yourself fixed up pretty enough for her? Bone, you start now, riding. Don't you worry none. Because you have any trouble with that dude, you just come to old Bone. <laughs> I won't need no help. I thought you was in a hurry. Well, I am. I'm dry. And stop talking and let's get going. <laughs> Well, this may not be the best beer in the world, Kitty, but it's a lot better than that stuff they serve up at Hayes City. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah, Kitty, this saloon, bad as it is, looks mighty good after some of the places I've been in on this trip. Now, well, look here, Matt. You get as good a run for your money here as any place in Kansas. Well, I was just saying, Kitty, that uh, <laughs> I'm glad to be back. You better be. Excuse me, Miss Kitty. Oh, hello, Andy. You know Marshal Dillon? Marshal? This is Andy Scott, Matt. Glad to know you, Andy. Andy's on a visit from back east. Oh, business trip? (laughs) No. No, it's a graduation present from my father, Marshal. This trip out here, I mean. Oh. When I get back home this fall, I'll be going to work. Uh, Sounds like you better enjoy yourself while you can. (laughs) Yes, I guess that's right. (laughs) Uh, Miss Kitty. Yeah? I was looking for Laurie. Uh, She ought to be here any time. Oh, uh... Well, I'll, uh... Andy, 
If you have a minute, why don't you sit down? I'd like to talk to you about something. All right. You want a beer? No, thank you. Uh, Kitty, uh, yeah. uh, I'll be over at the bar. Well, you can stay if you want. It's not private. Oh, I, I know that. But Mr. Hightower just came in. He has some papers for me. Oh. So, uh, I'll, I'll see you later. What did you want to talk about? Laurie. Oh? What about her? Well, she's very young, you know, Andy. She's just 18. Yes, I know. And I wouldn't want to see her hurt. Neither would I. If her parents were alive, she wouldn't be working here at all. Miss Kitty, Laurie and I have become good friends, very good friends. And she's told me a lot about herself. I'm sure she has. She was stranded. She needed money and a place to stay and people to be around. I don't think it's been hurting her, working here, I mean. I don't either. Then what you're saying is that you don't want to see her hurt by me. That's right. Neither do I. You're seeing an awful lot of each other. She's she's pretty fond of you. I hope she is. But with you, this whole thing's just part of your trip west, your big adventure on the plains. It's after you leave that I'm worried about. When the time comes for me to leave, I hope Laurie will leave with me. Come back to Philadelphia to stay. You talking about marriage? Yes, I am. I see. Now, uh, if you'll excuse me. I'll see you later, Miss Kitty. Sure. Well, I sure solved a lot that time, didn't I? Swing them doors open for me, Rat. I'm a thirsty man. Well, you swing them open for yourself, Bone. <laughs> yeah. Ooh-wee. Well, come on, Rat. I'll buy first round. <laughs> what? Look at there. Looky. Just like I told you. That clean shirt ain't gonna do you no good. That dude's already beating your time. Yeah. Well, you order up some beer. I'll be back. All right. Hey, Sam. Yes. <laughs> Miss Laurie? Oh, hello, Rad. I want you to come sit with me. Rad, I'm sorry, but I'm engaged for the evening. You are, huh? A young, wet haired dude comes to town, moves in on all the gals. I'm only interested in one of the ladies, Dawson, and she accepted my invitation first. Well, don't that sound pretty now? Rad, please don't make any trouble. What? I ain't gonna make no trouble, Miss Laurie. Not tonight. <laughs> Red. But I tell you how it's going to be. I'm coming to town every night from now on, and all them engagements is going to be with me. It seems to me that's up to Miss Laurie. Well, sure enough. It's up to Miss Laurie. And if she wants you to be able to get back where you come from in one piece, schoolboy, she'll see it my way. You get out of here. Sure I will. I'll go right now. But, uh... You better not let me catch you near this gal again, schoolboy. I'll teach you a new kind of lesson. Sociable, up to date, debonair. What's this, a new word game? No, I'm just mentioning the qualities that people admire in other people. Oh, I see. If you're sociable, up-to-date, and uh, what was that other word? Debonair? Yes, debonair. But listen to it this way. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date. With Pepsi, drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. Notice how many of your friends are serving Pepsi-Cola these days. It's the up-to-date refreshment. Be sociable, serve Pepsi. Mr. 
Yes, I hope that offer don't look like it usually does. Mr. Dillon? What? Uh, Mr. Dillon? Oh, what's on your mind, Chester? We got to get cleaned up. What? What's happened? Clean up for what? Why, she's coming to see you. That's what's... <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Well, Dillon. I got to get things picked up. Chester, will you leave those papers on my desk alone? Well, all right, but... It looks awful tacky. Now just stand still and tell me what this is all about. Who's coming to see me? Why, that pretty little Laurie Benson, Mr. Dillon. I just seen her having dinner over at Del Monco's, and that's what she said. She said she was coming right down here. That's what, oh, my goodness, there she is. Just take it easy, Chester. I think we can handle it. Well, I surely do hope so. I, oh, how to do, Miss Laurie? Come right in. Hello, Chester. Marshal Dillon. Hello, Laurie. Marshal... I don't know if I should have come here or not, but... Well, I need help. Oh? Well, uh... Why don't you sit down? Uh, let me dust off this chair for you. <laughs> well, thank you, Chester. Now, Laurie. We surely would be glad to help you, Miss Laurie. <laughs> That's very kind of you. All you have to do is just say the word and we'll be there fixing up anything that you need fixing up. Ain't that so, Mr. Dillon? <laughs> well, I think we ought to know what it was first, Chester, don't you? Well, yes, sir, of course. We'd have to know what it was first. Now, all you need to do is just speak right up, Miss Laurie. Well, uh, That's I wanted... right. Now, you just Chester. tell us. Mr. Dillon? Weren't you on your way over to the livery stable to see how that sore-legged horse was getting on? Well... Yes, sir, I was. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, excuse me, Miss Larry. Certainly, Chester. Now, Laurie, what's on your mind? Marshal Dillon, can... Can one man keep another man from seeing somebody? Oh. Well, uh, I'd say that would depend on the men, Laurie. I have a friend named Andrew Scott. Oh, yes, I met him. Well, do you know Red Dawson? Mm-hmm. I know Dawson. Well, he seems to like me. He, he's always been, well, very nice until Andy came to Dodge. Now Red says he'll hurt Andy if Andy and I see any more of each other. Well, that's not too surprising, Laurie. Andy's stubborn, Marshal. I'm afraid he'll get hurt. I don't want him to get hurt on account of me. He seems to have a mind of his own. But, Marshal, they mustn't fight. I thought you might kind of talk to them. Well, I tell you, Laurie, stopping a couple of men from fighting over a pretty girl is something that I can't do much about. You're laughing at me. No, no, Laurie, I'm not laughing at you. I'm very serious. It's just that... Well, this kind of thing isn't exactly in my department. Then you won't help me? You won't talk to them? I'll do anything I can, Laurie, to help you, but... There's just one thing. What's that? I can't promise that either one of them is going to pay any attention to what I say. Well, I'll say this, Rat. It's mighty interesting coming to town every night, but... I sure don't know how long the money's going to hold out. I ain't begging you to come with me every time, oh, no, Lord. but it just don't seem right for me to let you come here alone. Hey. Look, look in there, coming out of Delmonico's. <laughs> don't seem like you scared that schoolboy so bad after You all. shut up. <laughs> Little gal hanging on his arm, so nice and pretty. Thought you wasn't going to stand for that no more, right? I ain't, Bone, I ain't. Now, come on. You, schoolboy, turn around. Andy, don't do it. You calling me? He's wearing a gun, right? He better be. I warned you, schoolboy. I told you to stay away from her. Get back, Laurie. Get back in the doorway. Andy. You'll have to do more than warn me, Dawson. I'm a-going to. Andy! <laughs> Get him, Bone. Get him. All right, that's enough. Now drop your guns, all of you. He shot me, Marshal. I got a right to protect myself. I saw it, Rad. You drew on him first. Now go on, drop your guns right now. <clears throat> all right, Andy, get Laurie away from here. I'm not afraid of him, Marshal. Do what I said. Yes, sir. Come on, Laurie. I'll... Well, seem to me you're letting the wrong man go, Marshal. That kid shot Rad in the shoulder. It might be a pretty bad wound. 
It's your luck, that boy. You listen to me, Bone. If you want to help Rad, you get him up to Doc's, and then you get him out of Dodge, and you keep him out. Well, there ain't no law says he can't come back here. There is now. How you making it, Rad? Shoulder hanging together all right? It ain't my shoulder that's eating at me. Yeah. No account Marshall sure. Your talk's mighty big. That ain't the Marshall neither. I gotta get me that Andy Scott. I gotta get him good, Bo. You ain't got no chance to do nothing. That Marshall see you and Dodge again. He ain't gonna see me. What you figuring on? I'll lay low till it's dark. And hide out near the Dodge house. That's where he lives. Gonna ambush the kid? When he comes back from seeing Lori, I can jump him real easy. Figure on killing him? I don't much care what happens to him. I'll tell you true, I'm gonna give that kid the beating of his life. Hey, Rad. Hmm. Why don't we bring him out to our place? Why bother carrying him way out there? Well, no, it... That kid, he, he's got a, a rich daddy, ain't he? Yeah, I guess so. Well, make us a pile of money, and you could teach that kid a lesson at the same time. How? Well, his daddy paid good money to have us turn him loose. How would he know? We'd get the kid to write him a letter, telling him to. Well, I don't know. Main thing I want is for him to leave Laurie alone. Well, you do whatever you want. After we get the money. You know, you might just be right at that, Bone. After all, a little money never hurt nobody. Here comes Elmer Blurt, world's lowest pressure salesman. Nobody home, I hope, I hope, I hope. It says here, J.P. Pullum, dentist. You wouldn't want to buy a new 1959 Rambler, would you, Doc? You are a lucky man. I just happen to have a vacancy. Uh, sit down. Yeah, but, Doc... Open wide. Uh, oh, that's right. You know, you don't have to sell me on the 59 Rambler. It's first in economy, first in sales gains, and no wonder. Rambler has the best of both. Big car room, small car economy. Yeah, but, Doc... Oh, relax. Can't you salesmen ever stop selling? <laughs> you know, Rambler's got quite an idea with that personalized comfort. Independently adjustable front seats, adjustable headrests, easiest parking and handling in America. Mm-hmm. Well, that 59 Rambler is so terrific, it makes you want to put your foot right down on the accelerator. Oh. Oh. No, that didn't hurt, did it? Oh, gosh, Willikers, no. That's my lower plate you've been drilling. <laughs> Rambler outsells all six of the best-selling foreign makes combined. 59 Rambler sales are nearly two and a half times greater than a year ago. See the success car at Rambler Dealers. <laughs> I'm going downstairs, Laurie. I'll look in on you again a little later. Oh, I'm all right, really, I am, Kitty. I'm ashamed I gave way so, but... Well, I just couldn't believe Andy'd go away like that. That he'd run. I'm sorry, I... Honey, this wasn't his world. You mustn't blame him too much. I know, Kitty, I know. I shouldn't have expected anything, but... Well, I did think he'd at least say goodbye. That wouldn't have hurt him, I'll say that. But you might as well learn this lesson while you're still young enough to get over it. Learn what lesson? That the less you expect from a man, any man, better off you are. I'll see you later, Laurie. Sure. Well, you better answer me, boy. You better speak up. 
You're wasting your time, Bone. Mm-mm, not my time, schoolboy. Yours. Get up off of the floor. <laughs> Come on, get up. <clears throat> oh. Now, I'm telling you true. I'm your friend. All right, he'd shot you right off. He had his chance. Well, he'd have shot you last night if I hadn't argued him out of it. Now, look, all you have to do is just tell me how to write your daddy. It ain't so much, is it? I'm not going to tell you. No! You're going to tell me. Well, it might take a little time, but you'll tell me. No! Oh. Oh. All right, you just lay there while I'm figuring. Oh. I'll be back. It won't do you any good to kill me. No, you got us all wrong, schoolboy. We ain't going to kill you. No, sir. Of course, you ain't going to get no food or no water till you tell us how to write to your daddy. You... You won't get anything from me. Well, well then, you might be running the chance of starving to death, but that'd be up to you. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. I think I'll do that for now. But I'll be back, schoolboy. And next time, Rad may be with me. I, I tell you true, he just don't take kindly to you. He don't take kindly to you at all. Sit down with you, Mr. Jones. Ah, sure, Chester. Thank you. I was beginning to worry about you. It's not like you to be late for a meal. I sure do hope there's some of that pie left. I declare I could have wrung his neck. Ah, wrung whose neck? The old Dobie or the Dodge House. I just couldn't get away from him, and I knowed it was dinner time. <laughs> what was Dobie ragging you about this time? Well, he's awful upset over that young fellow, Andy Scott. Scott? Is he back in town? Well, that's just the trouble. He ain't. He left without paying his bill. He left his stuff strewn all over his room. Well, Mr. Doby's fit to be tied. He's acting like an old maid about it, if you ask Wait me. Wait a minute, Chester. Doby didn't see Scott leave? Well, he ain't saw him since that day you stopped the shooting out in the street. And Scott hasn't been back to his room? Well, if he has, Doby ain't saw him. It don't seem nobody has. I'm afraid somebody has, Chester. And we better find out. You sure they drug that boy way out here, Mr. Dillon? It don't make good sense to me. I'm not sure, Chester, but I don't expect a thing like this to make sense. I guess you're right. Yonder the house. Yeah. Let's leave the horses here. Just keep your eyes open. Dawson, Bone, open up. Come on, come on, it's Marshal Dillon, open up. What do you want here, Marshal? I got a few questions to ask you. We ain't got no time, man. Look, you ain't got no... Wait wait a minute, Rad. Don't want the Marshal to think we got something to hide. That's right, Bo. What do you want to know, Marshal? Where's Andy Scott? How should I know? Yeah, how should we know, Marshal? You run us out of Dodge, your own self. And the boy hasn't been seen since you left. Is that a fact? Well, he probably skedaddled back home to his daddy. Look in the other room, Chester. Yes, sir. Now, listen here. Just stand it? easy, Rad. Ain't nobody in there, Mr. Well, Dillon. Of course in there ain't. Now, it's like I Mr. Told Dillon, you. look out the window. They smoke coming out of that shed. What? Come on. Marshal, you ain't going nowhere. Don't try it, Rad. <laughs> Killed him. 
You want to argue anymore, Bone? Not like that, I don't. All right, then drop your gun on the floor and come outside and be mighty careful how you move. Sure. Boss, open the door, Chester. Yes, sir. Come on. Why, Scott, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Are you all right, Andy? Here, untie his arms and legs, Chester. I'll get this rag out of his mouth. Thank you. Oh. Oh, thank you, Marshal. It's a lot better. Stop that fire out, Chester. Yes, sir, it ain't got a very good start. All right. Here, Andy, let me help you. We'll get you out of here. Come on. Oh. Thanks. Ah. Now, did you kick that lantern over? Oh, when, when I heard somebody ride up, it was the only thing I could think of. You took an awful chance of burning yourself up. Well, my chances weren't too good any way I looked at it. Yeah. In fact, is, I'm surprised to find you alive at all. Oh, they weren't going to kill me, Marshal. They were just leaving me here to die by myself. Is this true, Bone? Mm-hmm. The Marshal was his own fault. All he had to do was just tell how to write to his daddy. What? Well, sure, Marshal. I kept Rad from shooting him. We were just we were just trying to get us some money. All that boy had to do was talk. We'd have let him go. Sure you would. Just like I'm going to let you go. Hmm? Well, you, you don't want me, Marshal. You, you, you got Rad. He's the one that started it. Sure, Bone. But you didn't stop it. Now, come on. Let's get going. Coming up to ten gallons, Mr. Johns. Ah, uh, check your oil filter and air filter. Might pay you a thousand dollars. How's that? Well, haven't you heard about Fram's big silver treasure hunt? Oh yes, heard something about it over my car radio this morning. What's it all about? Well, a regular filter check is so important that Fram Corporation is paying sixty thousand dollars to get car owners to check their filters now. Sixty thousand dollars in cash? Yeah, this is Fram's silver anniversary. Last year, 10,000 secretly numbered Fram filters were distributed all over the United States and installed in cars during regular servicing. You may have one in your car and not even know it. A Fram filter cartridge worth 1,000 silver dollars. And if you do, I get 1,000 bucks too. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's check those filters now. Hurry, folks. You could win up to $1,000 in cash. Join the big Fram treasure hunt. Check your car filters now. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Eleanor Berry, Vic Perrin, and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke.